Hello everybody and welcome to this lecture on the continuity equation in the intro to nuclear engineering. Um, so in most engineering problems, we can, we, or we can think of most engineering problems uh, as the time rate of change uh, equal to the, or as a rate of change equal to the sources minus the losses. And so in nuclear engineering in particular, since we are concerned with neutrons, <coughs> we can consider that um, what we actually have is, oops, come on. <laughs> uh, why is it not letting, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we have the rate of change of neutrons, so delta n <clears throat> is equal to what we can think of as the neutron production Right, how many neutrons are being produced, our source of neutrons, minus our neutron destruction, or our, uh, our neutron losses. Neutron destruction. Right, so, and, and then what we need to do is just fill in these neutron production and destruction terms. Um, so neutron production, for example, those come from fission and other sorts of reactions uh, that generate neutrons and neutron destruction so let me let me just write this down so neutron production comes from fission and other neutron generating reactions n2n and 3n etc um, and neutron destruction comes from either uh, we'll say uh, absorption uh, absorption right so when a neutron is absorbed uh, it will uh, um, uh, it will be There we go. Absorption. So when a neutron is absorbed, it goes away. Um, uh, leakage. So what that means is that the neutrons leave the re region of interest or the reactor. Of interest, i.e. the reactor. And uh, lastly, Neutrons themselves are radioactive um, uh, with a, because they can beta minus decay into a proton and an electron, right? Um, and so, uh, but this is, for most reactors, you know, this half-life, the half-life of a free neutron is about 12 and a half minutes, so this is uh, usually so long we don't really care. Don't consider. But those are the ways that we can lose neutrons in, in any particular system, okay? Um, and so, um, what we can write then is uh, the, if we wanted to write this again, we can write the change in, in N, the number of neutrons uh, per centimeter cubed is equal to the neutron production minus um, neutron absorption minus neutron leakage, right? These last two terms being our destruction uh, terms that we have. And, uh, oops, and recall that, um, N is in units of neutrons per centimeter cubed. It's a neutron density. Oops. Um, and so the total number of neutron is just this neutron number density 
integrated over the volume. So this is uh, the volume integral of n uh, dv. Okay, so nothing, uh, nothing super complex there. Thus, we can say that the time rate of change of uh, of this term, this integral over volume. So, if we want to, if we want to, come on. <laughs> uh, um, if we want to take the d dt of this, right? So the fraction of uh, the total neutron change in all volumes, so it, it, over the total volume, d, the integral of v uh, of n dv, oops, um, uh, by the first fundamental theorem of calculus, you can bring that uh, d dt in and you, into the integral, right? You can change the order of um, integration and derivative. So you can say that the integral of all v over all uh, volume over the entire volume is dn dt uh, uh, d db for any volume. Um, and this uh, this has units of then this is uh, is in units of neutrons per second, right? So this is really nice because then we can say um, we have this thing that's in terms of uh, we can basically sum over the change in the neutrons per each little volume element, and that gets us the total change in neutrons. So that hopefully makes some sense. Um, okay, so that takes care of this left-hand term or we'll take care of that left-hand term, as you'll see in a moment. Um, so for the production rate, um, say we have a volumetric source of neutrons. A volumetric source of neutrons. And we saw this in last lecture, uh, where we had this term S, which was in units of neutrons per centimeter uh, cubed per second, um, then if we wanted to integrate this over the entire volume, we would get something in neutrons per second. So we can say um, uh, that uh, the production rate, so we'll say prod is, um, math prod rate, right, because it's a rate, is now just equal to the integral over all volume, all volumes of s uh, times uh, dv, of course. Okay, so that's our production rate. Um, our absorption rate, we can actually, um, we can manage, whoops, where did those dots come from? It's pretty freaky. Halloween, I guess. Um, so for our absorption rate, absorption rate, um, instead we can rely on uh, the terms that we already know. Um, uh, so in, in particular, this is um, the macroscopic cross-section, uh, the macroscopic absorption cross-section, right, which has units of 1 over centimeters, um, times the flux, which has units of 1 over, or neutrons per centimeter cubed per second. Um, and so that also has units of... Uh, and, and then so if you integrate this with overall volume, uh, you integrate over the one over the volume, the centimeter and the centimeter from the sigma a and the centimeter squared from the, from the phi, one over centimeters squared from the, from the phi and you, um, 
you get rid of those volume elements, okay? Now, leakage is a little different, so we're gonna handle that um, slightly differently. So it's not um, uh, uh, the same So <laughs> as some of these other things that we've seen. So without loss of generality, let's consider a unit sphere, spherical shell that neutrons are flowing into and out of. So maybe let me draw this, right? So if we, oops, it's not a great sphere. So if we have a sphere, right? It's just a little spherical shell. Let me try to dash this thing if I can. Cool. Right, so you see how we're doing this. Um, then you've got neutrons that are gonna be crossing uh, this boundary, right? So they might be born inside the sphere and leave, or they might be born outside of the sphere and come into it. And so if we say that n hat, right, is some normal vector perpendicular to the surface of the sphere, um, uh, then we could also call it, this is also basically equal to r hat, right? Because it's a uh, radial in this case. Um, then what we would call the current, right? The current is the, if into and out of the sphere is the total flow across this boundary. Um, and so positive current relates to neutrons leaving the sphere, right? More are being born in than are born in the sphere and leaving than are um, coming from outside of the sphere into the sphere. Um, and so positive current means that the volume is losing neutrons, while negative current means that it's gaining neutrons. Um, and this is what we really care about. And, and what we really care about is just this r hat component of the, of the current, or of j hat. So um, we can go back and we can say, uh, let's go back here. Um, so we can say that the flow um, uh, is really just um, vector our current j with times the dot product of our of the uh, r hat component. Okay, um, and so uh, the units of this though happen to be right. If we go back um, and we look at our units, right? This is actually neutrons per centimeter. Uh, squared per second, right? So this doesn't have, let me say, let me be explicit about this. <laughs> so that is neutrons per second. Um, this is neutrons per second, right? What we're looking for is something per, with neutrons per second. So for leakage, we really want something, We since this is in, in units of neutrons per centimeter squared per second, we need to integrate it over the area. Now the area that we're thinking about integrating it, of course, is just the surface area of this sphere. And so um, in order to get our leakage term, what we say uh, is that, oops, uh, um, our leakage term is then the integral over the surface area of the sphere times uh, the current dotted by um, oops, dot, dotted by the uh, r hat component <laughs> uh, um, with respect to uh, da. Okay. Um, however, this isn't super great because all of the rest of our 
Uh, oh, and this, is, this does have, of course, units of neutrons per second. But this isn't great because all of the rest of the terms are integrals of volume, and this one is with respect to area. So by the divergence theorem, we can go ahead and convert this from something that's uh, with respect to uh, uh, area to something that's with respect to volume. So if you don't recall, um, the divergence from uh, from vector calculus states that um, uh, for any function f, the volume integral of the divergence of f, so um, uh, nabla c dot <laughs> of some scalar function f, or uh, of some function f, uh, or some vector function f, let me, sorry, not scalar function. Of course, it's a vector. Uh, it has to be a vector. Um, uh, dv, right, this is a volume integral. This is always equal to um, the integral with respect to a, or the integral with respect to the area of that same vector. Um, f uh, times the normal component uh, or some normal component so uh, that you're looking at so uh, and then this is da right so that's the divergence theorem so it's very easy to apply to this leakage term um, so this again is just an expression of the first fundamental theorem of calculus um, and so uh, uh, we can apply this and then get something that's with respect to, to, to DA. So we can say, again, um, let me go back and steal this. Um, so applying the divergence theorem, uh, what we get here is dV. Um, Nabla C dot. Let's get rid of this stuff. TV. Okay, so this is great. So now we have all of the the terms um, with respect to volume. Okay, and so we can write in uh, that our continuity equation. Um, is if we put all these together right so we've got um, uh, integral with respect to volume of uh, dn dt um, uh, dv <laughs> uh, and so that is equal to the production rate, which is just, um, as we set it up here, this is the integral of, um, with respect to volume of S uh, times dV. I'm really capitalizing these dVs. Minus our absorption rate, which is the integral of uh, over all the all volumes times uh, our macroscopic absorption cross section sigma a times the flux phi uh, times dv and then minus uh, our leakage term right here which is uh, d or the integral with respect to all volumes <laughs> of uh, the gradient so nabla or sorry, the divergence uh, c dot um, uh, times j, uh, yeah, times the vector j, times our, the vector of our current right, j, uh, times dv. Okay. 
So that's our continuity equation. Now that's not so bad. Now, like I said before, this is all in terms of integrating over all volumes. So what this means is that for each volume element that we're integrating over, this equation also has to hold. And so we can take the derivative, um, uh, we can take the derivative with respect to volume and get rid of these integrals. And so thus, our equation becomes um, just, uh, let me copy this, or the continuity equation becomes as follows, right? So it's just, oops, uh, dn dt, so the time, the rate of change over the number of neutrons equals our source term minus absorption sigma a phi uh, minus the uh, divergence of our current. Oops. Voila. Let me fix this. This should have been capital B. And so that is our uh, continuity term, uh, or that's our continuity term. Uh, and it's really not so bad. And so um, if we're in a steady state, right, um, uh, then that's even easier because our time rate of change we know is zero. So um, we can simply say, we can say that um, in a steady state system where nothing is changing as a function of time, we just have zero equals our, um, uh, our sources uh, uh, minus our losses, etc. And since this is all equal to zero, uh, or minus our, minus our losses, uh, this actually often gets written in the opposite where we say, um, the divergence, uh, well, we just put a negative sign out in here, right? So you say um, the divergence plus our absorption has to be minus our sources. And so that is how this continuity term is often written. All right, I think that's it for the day. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.